A very warm welcome to our program. This is One TV News in English at 5. I'm Yanni Mutsios. Here are today's top stories. Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Devlet Bahçeli are expected to attend the military drill FS 2022 held in the Aegean on Thursday. Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs has planned to restart Ukrainian grain exports is reasonable. Turkey not powerful enough to act as a guarantor or director of Ukrainian grain trade, as Union says. Four more children treated on suspicion of acute hepatitis, Greek health organization says. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis announces extension of working hours in elementary and nursing school till 6 o'clock in, in the evening. Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Devlet Pakhtseli are expected to attend the military drill FS 2022 held in the Aegean on Thursday. Devlet Pakhtseli, the government partner on Tuesday, used extremely provocative language against the Prime Minister's visit to the Isles of Pserimos, Kos and Dastipalia. Pakhtseli noted that Mitsotakis visited these islands on which their sovereignty is in question right under Turkey's nose and attempts to provoke Turkey so as to create an armed conflict atmosphere, if that is considered necessary. Pakhtseli also raised the issue of Turkish sovereignty over the Dodecanese complex of islands, noting that both the heart and the looks of Dodecanese are facing towards Turkey. Turkish government partners said that whoever dares to touch their vein, we will rip his heart out. Coming up next, four more children treated on suspicion of acute hepatitis, Greek health organization says. Turkey's foreign minister said on Wednesday a United Nations plan to ease a global food crisis by restarting Ukrainian grain exports along a sea corridor was reasonable and requires more talks with Moscow and Kyiv to ensure ship safety. Speaking alongside Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, Turkey's Mevlut Çavuşoglu said the meeting in Ankara was fruitful, including a perceived will to return to negotiations between Moscow and Kyiv for a possible ceasefire. Lavrov said the onus was on Ukraine to solve the grain shipments problem by demining its black sea ports and that Russia needed to take no action because it had already made the necessary commitments. Ukraine has said it needed effective security guarantees before it could start shipments voicing concerns that Moscow could use the potential corridor to move on its southern port of Odessa. Turkey, which is negotiating with Russia to secure safe routes for grain exports from blocked Ukrainian seaports, is not powerful enough to act as a guarantor, say, said the director of Ukrainian Grain Traders Union, UGC, UGA, Sergei Ivasenko, at an online grain conference in Kyiv. Ivasenko noted that removing sea mine from Ukrainian waters would take two to three months and that Turkish and Romanian navies should not get involved. Moscow, however, denies responsibility for the international food crisis, blaming Western sanctions. Any deal could involve a Turkish naval escort for tankers leaving Odessa and other Ukrainian ports, which are currently blockaded, by Russia's navy and onward to Turkish trades and global markets. Tsavusoglu said he believed the world should work together to open a safe passage for Ukraine's agricultural exports and that Turkey viewed the Russian demands to lift restrictions on its farm exports as very legitimate. Lavrov said the main problem was that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky had categorically refused to, resure, to resolve the mine ports problem. More to come. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis announces extension of working hours in elementary and nursing schools till 6 o'clock in the evening. Four more children were hospitalized on suspicion of acute hepatitis during the last fortnight in Greece. Symptoms showed in each case appeared to comply with those set by the World Health Organization. A four-and-a-half-year-old toddler suffered from jaundice, whereas no other symptoms relating to acute hepatitis occurred. Medical tests showed high values of transaminase, though no infection or any other cause was identified. The toddler remains in hospital with positive recovery signs. Three more kids, 12, 6 and 5 and a half years old respectively, showed symptoms of gastroenteritis as well as an increase in transaminase values after being subjected to medical tests. Children were treated in hospital and were released in excellent health state. Nine potential cases of acute hepatitis appeared in Greece in total, according to the National Health Organization. 
Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis said that working hours in elementary and nursing schools will be extended up until 6 o'clock in the evening in his speech at, an at a conference titled Demographics, the Great Challenge. Some initiatives ready to be implemented are underway, such as the extension of working hours in elementary and nursing schools till, till 6 o'clock in the evening, enabling kids to study while at school and relieving parts, parents from the burden at home, Prime Minister said. Mitsotakis also noted that the demographics are a national existential issue, which requires a bipartisan approach as well as the unification of each and every social force of Greece. This is not a threat we are referring to on our national identity. It is a direct undermining of the country's ability to produce wealth, both privately and jointly level, keeping the strong bonds that bring people together, Mitsotakis said. Thus, the danger is as current as the term determining, Prime Minister noted. In addition, in addition uh, Mitsotakis said that national board will be formed powered with the coordination of all actions and applicable to all social services and the ministries. Prime Minister also said that medical staff with gynecologists and pedi pediatricians will be posted on regional health facilities, especially in the islands, so as to sustain the family institution. Now, Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a statement on the desecration of the Holy Chapel of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate in Jerusalem. We express our utmost concern on the invasion in the facilities of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate by members of the Jewish Seminary and the desecration of the chapel on site. We expect the Israeli security forces to take all necessary actions to investigate the incident thoroughly, to bring those responsible to justice and to deter others from committing similar illegal actions in the future, the statement reads. Greece always expresses its interest in the Jerusalem Patriarchate and its assets on the Holy Pilgrims of the Holy Land, as included in the status quo of the Holy Land, state reads. Now, in Germany, a car has been driven into a crowd of people in western Berlin near the site of the 2016 Christmas market terror attack, killing one person and injuring several others. A spokesperson for the German capital's fire service said at least eight people had been seriously injured, five of whom were being treated for critical injuries. An unspecified number of people had sustained lighter injuries. The incident took place on Wednesday at about 10.30 a.m. near the scene of a fatal attack on December 19, 2016, when Anis Samri, a rejected Tunisian asylum seeker with Islamist links, hijacked a truck, killed the driver and then plucked it into a crowded Christmas market, killing 11 more people and injuring dozens of others. Pictures circulating on social media saw the silver Renault Clio after having crashed into the shop front window of a branch of the German cosmetics chain Douglas on Marburger Strasse. Back to our stories today, a suspect wearing balaclava dressed in black clothes approached the ticket till in the Keramoti port in northern Greece on Tuesday night and stole 3,500 euros. The suspect drove off in a car and it is still at large. At the time of the robbery, there was little traffic around the port, whereas the last boat to Thassos departed a few minutes prior to the robbery. That's all from us for now. Stay with us next news bulletin in Greek at 6 o'clock. Thank you for watching.